for joining me so today i've got two quick and easy projects well hopefully i can make them quick using the free ribbon spool digitals that are over on my facebook group the links in the description box below so one of my group members um this morning dina marie or diana um, i'm not sure how you pronounce her name shared a little needle book that she'd made using the spools now she did hers in a different way i'll explain um how she made hers in a minute and it just inspired me to have a go at my own little needle book and then here we've got a desktop needle keeper so that will keep your needles um so you're not i'm always losing my needles you know when i'm journaling i'll put it down on my desk and then it gets lost in a heap of off cuts and i can never find it so this solves that problem and then this is just something really cute to create either for yourself or to gift it's just a little bit of fun and it's a little needle book okay but using just to just bits and bobs and paper so here we've got a lovely decorative front now i'm not going to be decorating all of mine on the tutorial i'll just show you the bare frame of it so that then you can go away and decorate it how you like okay so i've just used a little cluster here and we've just got some seam binding to close the little book and if i just show you inside mine i've kept it really simple I've just got some lace there which you can put your pins i've got some little safety pins and then here i've just got some little hat pins and that's just a, a cute little idea of something quick and easy to make you could slip it inside a journal absolutely you could in a pocket um, or a tuck really really lovely it's not too bulky it depends i mean obviously my hat pins are bulky if they weren't in it would be a much slimmer profile um but yeah it's a lovely little id so the way um Dean, Deanna, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, whether it's Deanna or Dina, um, she made hers. What she did was she bound hers with lace at the back. I don't know if she squared off there. And then she put an actual fabric page in. So I folded over a piece of fabric so that you had like two pages and then she sewed it in. Um, so then you know you've got a flippy flappy page so that's another way to do it another easy way is to just glue some felt on there or some fabric um but yeah so i'll show you really quickly how how these two are made okay so get comfy <laughs> and let's get creating okay so i'm going to start with the quickest project which is the little meat needle minder ne nearly said needle minder <laughs> so all you need is cut one of the spools i haven't even double sided it i've just printed it on cardstock cut two circles one smaller than the other okay and then put your you need a strong magnet i get mine from spider magnets on ebay but i'm in the uk don't buy cheap magnets it's one thing i won't buy cheap i won't buy cheap magnets because they they're always just not very strong okay but you know use what you've got and if it works it works okay just adhere your magnet to the larger circle take your tape off it's unbelievably so easy um you can make these in no minutes obviously you can decorate it further make it more fancy put your own spin on it okay i'm just giving you the bare basics and then We'll do the second one. Okay. And then just layer them up. Okay. Then literally just stick that in the middle of your spool. <laughs> it's difficult crafting this. <laughs> I mean, you could have just that on your desk as a needle minder, but I would lose that as well. I need it on this and then I need to glue it to like a piece of acrylic um, or a big piece of wood that's like this big <laughs> so that I don't lose it stick it in the middle and there you go you've got a magnetic ne needle minder I added an eyelet and some seam binding to mine so that's one cute idea and if your magnets are strong enough let me see yeah so in front of me I've got my light stand and my phone stand which are both metal so this magnet is so strong it will actually just attach straight to there as well so if i'm crafting i can just put it in front of me and it's there and i can see and it's holding my needle so that's one idea okay so the little book right so the little bit book is a little bit more in depth okay so you need to cut out um four of the spools if you want them sturdy 
I've printed them on cardstock and printed, you know, and I'm going to glue them back to back. You can obviously use recycled packaging. You can do what you want. You don't have to print them out multiple times and back them. Okay. You must ink because inking hides a multitude of sins when you are fussy cutting. It also hides that white core of the cardstock and it just gives a softer, prettier look. However, inking is not essential. So it might not be for you. You don't have to do it. There's no law or, you know, written rule within crafting that you have to ink the edges of things. Not everybody likes it. So I'm using Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. You can use whatever you like. And I've said before, you don't have to use distress inks. You can use any kind of ink to ink with. Just these are just softer and just nice. They're not, they are nice, I will say. Some things are worth paying for. So then you need a piece of cardstock to make a hinge. Now, I've worked this out carefully because, and I'll tell you for why, if your hinge isn't the right size, then when you put them like that, okay, um, you two, so imagine this is the front and the back, then when you open and close it, these bobbly bits, top and bottom, will get in the way and overlap. So you've, okay, so you need a piece of cardstock that's at, at least, what did I measure, one and three quarters? One and a half. Yeah, one and three quarters by one and a half. Okay, so one and a half will just fit nicely in there. And one and three quarters, fold it in half. Okay, don't go less than one and three quarters when you're making your hinge. And you do your hinge and glue your hinge on before you put your, you know, your back layer on, as it were. Although you don't have to. You could use just a piece of lace and join them, but it might be a bit flippy floppy. Um, so I'm using cardstock. So then you glue your hinge. So just glue right at the edge to start with. Don't glue the whole thing. Just at the edge. Um, am I doing that right? Yeah. Just at the edge on the two sides. Okay. So start off right close to the edge. Okay. Because you may well need to do some adjustments. Then do your other piece. And attach that. Okay. Then before your glue is dry and use glue, it will make your life easier. Put them together, line them up so that they're more or less similar. And then if you feel like you can move this in a bit, a bit, move it in a bit. It just doesn't want to be any further in than the edge of here. Otherwise, when you open that, these two edges will stick together. So another good way of doing it is to just visually move them closer until you get them where you want them. Keeping that in the middle. Okay. Close it and, and, you know, just keep adjusting it until you're happy with it and it's straight. Now, I think this actually looks cute. Although it's protruding, do you not think it looks a little bit like a laundry tag or a garment uh, label? Do you know what I mean? That's why on mine, I just did some little stamping. If I had a handmade stamp or anything that looked remotely like a you know, a uh, garment label or laundry care stamp, that would look super cute. Okay, but I don't have anything like that. So just use what you've got or you don't even have to. So just make sure they're not overlapping. Mine's just shifted. So like I say, you just need to just double check that when you open it, the bobbly bits at the top and the bobbly bits at the bottom don't, ov you know, overlap. Otherwise, you're not getting a neat finish. Then all you have to do is glue your top layer if if you so desire you can leave it like that if you want but i can't help but um try and make things look as pretty as possible even if it's just something and nothing um and then once you've done you can really have fun and go to town with the decorating now there may be some discrepancy in the cutting you know so just line it up the best way and then once it's dry any excess that's showing, just, just trim it off with your scissors. If you're fussy cutting, you're not going to get two images perfectly the same. Okay, if you've got a scan and cut, then it may well do that. I don't know. I've not got one. <laughs> Anybody out there sponsor, wants to sponsor me and buy me a scan and cut or similar? My email's in the description box below. <laughs> 
anybody's won the lottery and they want to, you know, spread a bit of love. <laughs> right, so this is not going to be perfect because, um, you know, it, take time over it, line them up nicely, make sure it shuts and then any excess, just trim it. Trying to line mine up a bit nicer. Okay. See, you know, I mean, I paper craft all day long, every day, and I don't fussy cut perfect. Nobody can um, do it absolutely perfect. So you just wait until it's dry, and then if you've got some overlapping on one side, just go and retrim it so that they both match up. It's not, don't matter. Nothing has to be perfect, and nobody is perfect. Okay. I don't edit ed, um, things like this out of my videos because I like you to show that I like to show that nobody's perfect, least of all me. Right, so that's that. So then, what I did was I added strips of lace. Okay. Now, if I start adding strips of lace here, I'm just gonna do it for demonstration purposes. Okay. Then it's it took this lace took a while to dry, so. It, Three little strips of lace, okay. One for the and I did one for the top, one for the middle, one for the bottom, or a little piece of felt, or a little piece of fabric. It really doesn't matter what it is, as long as you can put a needle through it, okay. So what you do is you just tack it just at the edges and leave the center um, free, okay. And then for the other section, I just used a piece of cardstock. And what I did was I just layered it with some paper, okay. So shall we layer? I layer it with paper, although this doesn't no, because that don't go. <laughs> don't go. So I layered it with paper, okay. I cut it to the width, layered it with some coordinating paper. I actually printed another spool on just copy of paper and just cut it up and use that. Then all I did was I got myself a craft mat and a pokey tool. I'm poked for holes. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you can, I'm just giving you the idea so you can go away and have a go. I was inspired by Dina or Diana, um, however we pronounce her name. Um, and I went away and I made a version that was not like that, not the same as hers. So you may go away and make a version that's not the same as mine, but that's inspired by it. Because as, um, Dina or Dia Diana, I don't, I'm not sure how we, how we pronounce, I'll have to ask her, um, said, craftiness is contagious. It's catching. <laughs> so if you see an idea, you will catch it and you won't rest. I couldn't rest until I'd had a go. So then obviously you can just put your needles or whatever through just the cardstock as well like that. Okay. I mean, this is how we get our needles when we buy them from the shop. Or again, you can use felt or fabric or whatever and then just glue it to the inside of there, okay? Then from there, I wait. if you're going to use fabric and you're going right to the edge, wait for it to fully dry and then I added my eyelets, okay? If you do it while your lace is, or your glue is wet, you're going to struggle to cut through the lace. But if you use a cropper dial, it should work, Um absolutely fine that's if you want to use eyelets you don't have to put a closure on it at all it's super cute as it is so from there it's just uh, making it look cute so i hope that that's given you some inspiration um and inspires you the way that um diana um inspired me this morning i couldn't rest until i'd made some so two super cute ideas the little needle book okay and then the little needle minder how cute is that that's gonna stay on my desk forever <laughs> i hope that helps thanks for watching don't forget the free digitals are in my facebook group not on my coffee sometimes i will share things exclusive there to say thank you to the members and you know obviously help grow the membership of the group um so there you go if you want them that's where you'll find them thanks for watching if you make one, make sure you tag me so I can see what you've created because I'll always be your biggest cheerleader. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.